On behalf of the City of Los Angeles Domestic Violence Task Force, welcome to our annual Domestic Violence Awareness Month event and day of action. My name is Eve Sheedy. I am chair of the Domestic Violence Task Force and Council for Domestic Violence Policy at the Los Angeles City Attorney's Office. Wait, that's an applause line. That's an applause Yay! Line. Oh, for you. <laughs> My boss is here. That, that helps. Okay. The Domestic Violence Task Force is a coalition of nonprofit domestic violence agencies and government representatives that work together to provide counsel, expertise, and coordination of the city's domestic violence programs and policies. To my left and right are members of the Domestic Violence Task Force and a number of other officials. Um, but as to the members of the task force, they're some of the most dedicated domestic violence experts and professionals, not only in Los Angeles, but in the country. Today, we present the Dr. Marjorie Browdy Award to a local organization, A Window Between Worlds. And we honor the brave and compassionate men and women of the Los Angeles Police Department who have displayed their commitment to victims of domestic violence by doing more than what is asked of them and showing us the best of what LAPD has to offer. Mike, there we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That was my turn. We're also here to raise awareness about domestic violence. But what does that mean? It means letting every victim, every family, and every child know that they are not alone, that the violence perpetrated against them is not their fault, and that there is help and support available 24-7, 365 days a year. Sometimes that help is in the form of a domestic violence agency through a hotline, a support group, or a bed at a shelter. Sometimes that help is in the form of a police response and a criminal prosecution. And sometimes that help is in the form of a friend or a coworker. It also means focusing on ending violence. When we watch a video of a man dragging an unconscious woman out of an elevator and stepping over her body, we don't focus on what she did prior to being knocked unconscious. We ask, what can we do to prevent this from happening again? When we read about a woman who shoots her husband after he punches her son in the face, we don't focus on whether or not she was faithful. We ask, how did this family get to this point without reaching out for help? When the former general manager of a professional sports team says hundreds and hundreds of domestic violence cases were not reported because disciplinary action would have put his team at a competitive disadvantage, we ask, how do we stop calling something a win when the actual physical safety of our families, our partners, and our children remain at risk? <laughs> the campaign created by A Window Between Worlds is called I Can, We Can, and uses hands as canvases to share what we can do to end violence. It rests on the understanding that everybody, everywhere, can do something to end violence. The beauty of the campaign is the recognition that we do not all have to have the same level of commitment, the same amount of time, or the same level of passion. Whether you can listen, hear, teach, reach out, or change the world, whatever you can do makes a difference, and we can all do something. On behalf of the task force, we challenge you, all of you, to do something to help us make the homes of Angelinos safe. Before I hand the mic over to our wonderful MC, on behalf of the task force, we want to give a special thanks to our council liaison, Councilman Mike Bonin, and his staff, especially Anna, whose generous support has enabled us to display some of the I Can, We Can artwork at the east end of the bridge to City Hall East. We also want to thank Council Members Blumenfeld, Labange, Parks, and Buscaino for their support. Together, we can end domestic violence. It is now my pleasure to introduce Josefa Salinas. Ms. Salinas was awarded the National Latina Businesswoman of the Year in Broadcasting 
in 2007, the Spirit of Peace Award in 2008, and the President's Volunteer Service Award in 2010. Mayor Garcetti recently appointed her as President of the Los Angeles Public Libraries Commission. This year, USC Marshall School of Business inducted her into the Latina Global Executive Leadership Program and the National Diversity Council selected her as one of 2014's most powerful and influential women. Please welcome the Director of Community Affairs for Clear Channel Radio and Hot 92.3 FM on-air personality, Josefa Salinas. Thank you, and good morning. Well, you already know, I am Josefa Salinas from Hot 92.3, and it is my absolute pleasure to be here for this Domestic Awareness Violence, Violence Awareness Month, an event here at City Hall. We're assembled here today in beautiful downtown Los Angeles on a wonderful day that's not going to be too hot. And for uh, my Spanish-speaking members in the audience, bienvenidos. Estamos en el Palacio Municipal, el corazón de Los Angeles. Domestic violence and intimate partner violence is a growing problem in our communities, and it has taken a tremendous toll on Los Angeles County residents. It's a problem that many of us struggle to understand, and it's an issue that almost always seems to come with a very complex set of answers. I've made it my personal mission to help our beloved communities address these complexities and this problem that continues to undermine the quality of life for our families and our communities here in Los Angeles. Domestic violence is an epidemic. It affects individuals in every community, regardless of age, economic status, race, religion, nationality, or educational background. It can result in physical injury, psychological trauma, and sometimes death. I'm gonna give you a few statistics. One in every four women will experience domestic violence in her lifetime. An estimated 1.3 million women are victims of physical assault by an intimate partner every single year. 85% of domestic violence happens to women. Historically, women and girls have been the most victimized by someone they knew. And in most cases, domestic violence is never reported to the police. We have a lot of work to do. We need to start conversations with our daughters and our sons. These are not one-way conversations. We must include both women and men, daughters and sons, fathers and mothers, wives and husbands in this conversation moving forward. It is the only way we will find an answer. Now, I spent a great deal of my professional career working to empower communities, using my voice and resources to help find solutions to the problems that families face in greater Los Angeles area, and I will continue to offer my support and my voice, and I will not be quiet. I believe that knowledge is power. Today, in the heart of our great city, we declare that it is our day of action. The theme for today is I can, we can. We will hear from our mayor and other city officials about the efforts to end domestic violence and truly make our homes, our communities, our schools, and our lives a safer place. I Can, We Can highlights the work of one of our honorees, A Window Between Worlds, and showcases the magnificent artwork created by our mayor, Mary, Mayor Eric Garcetti, and other city officials, the Los Angeles City Domestic Violence Task Force, law enforcement personnel, direct service and public service providers and agencies, and our greater Los Angeles area stakeholders, which are all of you. And I think we even have a wor little workshop, art workshop today, right? Yes, you can go over here and actually put your word for what you declare today is. Today we can take action to raise awareness, and today I can take action to use my voice. I can, we can, and we will. All right, it is my honor now to introduce our city attorney, Mike Fuhrer. Thank you. 
I don't know where those shout outs came from, but please come to my office and hang out there a lot. <laughs> it is both an honor and a very important moment for all of us to be here together. We're calling for a day of action, but we're doing more than that. We're celebrating a unified commitment among everyone within the city family to stand up and to take notice and to focus and to take action on something that has plagued our community. Domestic violence isn't just an NFL problem and it diminishes every one of us on the streets of our cities every day to have the national conversation focus there instead of what happens in our homes, in our schools, and on our streets, week in and week out. Now, the message of today, from my standpoint, is raising awareness is significant, making sure that every victim knows that she or he are not alone, that there is a united front together to stand with you, to support you, to reach out for you, and to stand up for you, including in the justice system. But it's more than that. We need to pledge to take specific, concrete action. As Eve exemplifies, we have a marvelous team in my office. Our office reviews 200 domestic violence allegations a week, 11,000 a year. Think about that for a moment. Eve, Donna Edmiston, the other members of our team who are standing with us today do a remarkable job. Today, this event, calls on each participant, whether it's you in this audience or those of us who are speaking here, to say what is the next step we're going to pledge to take. And in our office, we're pledging to take these steps. Working very closely with our partners in law enforcement, Chief Beck and his great team at the police department and others in the justice system, I pledge our office will assure that domestic violence perpetrators do not have weapons. Next. Eve has been a pioneer nationally, leading the cause to focus on the fact that there is a deep connection between domestic violence and gang violence. Eve leads the task force focused on that connection. I pledge that this year our office is going to take further steps to deepen that connection, to train gang intervention specialists, and to lift up all of us to assure that the violence that plagues our communities as tied to this connection diminishes. And last. We all know that domestic violence is a problem that affects spouses and partners, and it's a problem that can affect kids and families. We know that kids who grow up in environments pervaded with violence and trauma don't have their brains develop in the same way as they were biologically destined to do. I pledge that our office, through our new program focused on children exposed to violence, will take deep steps in communities and in our office to assure that our children are destined to fulfill the potential that each of them should have. So, as was said earlier, we're here to honor Window Between Worlds. We're here to focus on their I Can, We, Stand, we Can campaign. My very nominal artistic contribution to this event. <laughs> that, that, whole, that whole Garcetti artistic thing really bugs me. So, <laughs> so, my contribution to this event is I, and indeed we, can stand for justice. Thank you very much. All right. I'm going to keep saying this between every person. I can, we can. I want you to burn that into your minds. Now it is my great pleasure to bring up someone who is a good friend, has been for years. We've been on the streets of L.A. together for uh, over a decade, and he is now one of the most amazing mayors I think we have ever had. I watched him yesterday introduce our new uh, poet laureate, Luis Rodriguez for Los Angeles, and he is here today because that's what this man does. He walks the streets, he's here with us, he's sincere and he means what he says. He said, si se puede, and he is doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, our mayor, Eric Garcetti. A very good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? This is the, the toughest spot in City Hall to hear anyone, so I hope you can hear what we're saying today. The most beautiful spot, but the worst acoustics. But I, I couldn't be more overjoyed to be back here with Mike Fuhr and Ron Galperin, 
um, with Mike Bonin, and thank you for taking over chairing as liaison um, to the city council, which for many years I was very proud to be as well. Tom Labonge and Bob Blumenfield, Chief Beck, as I mentioned, t uh, the whole domestic violence task force, which is really the front line um, of our ongoing work and has just been a tremendous, tremendous asset. I believe that LA probably has the best collection of individuals focused on this in the country. And congratulations to A Window Between Worlds, to all the advocates and service providers, um, Deputy Mayor Decker, uh, who does extraordinary work with her team. Thank you so much. And also Rushmore Cervantes, I want to thank you for being here as well, from HCID, which stands for Housing Community Investment Department. <laughs> we all have to get used to new acronyms. Um, look, there's a lot of things I could say that are good news, and I think it's important for us to recognize that, especially with our officers here who are the front line of the response together with our DART and SART teams of what happens when somebody who is a fellow Angelino reaches out in pain, in panic, in need. And the Los Angeles Police Department has done such an extraordinary job over the last decade together with the community, with good public policy hopefully emanating from here and the advocates to bring crime down to the lowest level since the 1950s. That's the good news. But the troubling news is that this year, we've seen upticks in aggravated assaults. Part of that is how we reclassify them, and part of that is we're seeing an increase. Now, to put that in perspective, before people panic, it's still lower than it was two years ago. It's still safer than it had been in decades up to then. But we see both sexual assaults, rapes up, and we see domestic violence up. One thing you'll get from me as the mayor is the good news and the bad news. Transparency in government has to be about saying what we're doing well, and what we need to step up and do better. And I think, you know, whether it's other issues that we have here at City Hall, one day we woke up and there was only one woman that was an elected official out of 18 of us. Uh, that was a, a metaphor as well for work doesn't just self-perpetuate. It's like a balloon that deflates that if we don't add air into it. The work that we did in the 90s that my father led as one of the first law enforcement officials to say domestic violence has a consequence beyond just the victims. If you go to death row, most of the people who are there who have committed horrible crimes and themselves are due to be executed came from abusive backgrounds, that this cycle of violence has to stop. We really raised awareness in a way that this became a national issue in the 90s and in the O's or whatever we call last decade. But now we have to bring that same sense of vigilance and urgency back to our work now. And I know I'm preaching to the converted here because we never stopped. But we, as the leaders, must figure out a way, and certainly Deputy Mayor Decker and I, together with City Council Law Enforcement, are going to figure out how do we bring these pieces together and how do we get the community partners again, the four million people that are the true force multipliers, to be more engaged and involved in making sure everybody knows this is unacceptable, that every kid goes through a curriculum at LAUSD and any school in this city to make sure that dating violence is something that's brought to the forefront so before they become abused or abusers as adults, they stop that as children. So we know that the tie-in with bullying and other forms of violence is connected to what we see finally in our homes and on our streets. We cannot rest, my friends. We can celebrate the progress that's been made we can celebrate the voices that we have, and I, I think it's incredible, Window Between Worlds, the way that you give a voice to survivors, that they can express themselves. Luis Rodriguez, that a poet laureate that was just mentioned, uh, who will be our poet laureate for the next two years, came out of a life of violence himself. When he was 11 years old, he joined his first gang. But it was when he found, he went to a UC Berkeley writing seminar, that he found his voice and became a great award-winning writer, poet, essayist, novelist. Survivors of domestic violence must find their voices too, not just to continue their healing, but to allow others to feel that and to recognize that they have a voice, that they are someone. And the officers that we honor here today, I wanna thank you for what you do because you are sometimes that first trusted safe person and you know the lives you've changed. You keep in touch with a lot of those folks those folks that roll out from the advocacy organizations and we should not rest till we have a DART team in every division in this city. You also know those stories and you know those triumphs. And let's make sure there aren't tragedies in this city. Let's continue to push down the statistics because they aren't numbers, they represent people. 
and know that you have in this mayor the strongest advocate to be alongside you as well. Together with the city council, with my two fellow citywide elected officials as well, I know that next year will be a better year for all of us. Thank you so much. I can, we can. Our next speaker, Controller Ron Galperin. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much to uh, Eve Sheedy, to the LAPD, to Josefina Salinas, and of course, a window between two worlds be for all the great work that you are doing. And, and I attend many events that are in this rotunda, but it's really heartening to see just how many people have come out this morning for this absolutely vital issue. So thank you for all your amazing work. As a city, we count on so many people for response to domestic violence. The LAPD, of course, and DART, the city attorney, the Housing Community Investment Department, domestic abuse response teams, the mayor's office, the Domestic Violence Task Force, many nonprofit partners. And these are all organizations, these are all entities that actually have to work together more and more to really have a response that will be the best possible one for domestic violence victims and to prevent domestic violence. Now, as many of you may have heard, actually my office is undertaking an audit of domestic violence prevention programs and of response programs in the city of Los Angeles. And that's because I think we all know that we can and that we must do better. Now, of course, the, the audits that we do don't tell you what in advance our findings are going to be. But I think that there is no question that we need the resources in this city and that we have to dedicate the resources to this important work. So we need to do everything that we can to raise awareness, to eliminate this scourge. And it's one that affects everybody, not just the victims, but each and every person in our society in the final analysis is impacted by domestic violence. Thank you for all that you do. Looking forward to working with everybody in here as we come up with the recommendations for continuing some of the great work that has been done. Thank you. I can, we can. Our next speaker is from my district, and it's my uh, proud honor to uh, bring him up, Mike Bonin from District 11. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm going to be speaking in a few minutes in council, so I'm going to be brief. I just want to thank everybody for being a part of this today. I'm particularly glad to have been able to pick up the baton from Mayor Garcetti and be the liaison to the task force. And I'm particularly glad to represent a district that has been so energized and engaged on this issue for so long. Uh, Marjorie Browdy, who was sort of the, the, the godmother of so much of what we do, lived in Brentwood. A window between worlds is in Venice. Carol Tantow from Sojourn lived and worked in Venice for so many years, and Josefina herself is also a resident of CD11. I'm so glad for all the work that you're doing. Um, so much of domestic violence is about secrets. It's about the secret of the young kid who's ashamed to explain why he has a bruise on his arm or his back. It's about the secret of the wife who's afraid to tell her friends that her husband is an abuser. But there's another secret we need to address, and it's the secret that the good work that all of you do is not well enough known in the city of Los Angeles. I'm glad that we have a Domestic Violence Awareness Month so we can spread the message not only that there is domestic violence out there and people need to pay attention, but there are services and that there are organizations and there are people willing to help and offer a hand. And so today we begin to, to spread that word. I also want to quickly give a shout out to, to one of my colleagues. He'll be speaking a little bit later. But I want to say a word about Bob Blumenfield. Uh, long before I ever got elected, Bob was working on these issues in Sacramento and leading on them, and he's a tremendous champion of this, uh, and I want to make sure we all acknowledge the work that Bob has been doing. I can, we can. 
Our next speaker was kind of just introduced. Please welcome to the podium from District 3, Bob Blumenfield. Thank you. Um, and I want to I return the, the thanks, and I, I appreciate the acknowledgement, but, but uh, Mike Bonner is really taking the lead on this task force in, in the council, and I want to thank him for taking that leadership uh, and commit to working with him and with all of you on this issue. And I, I want to I I state the mantra again, I can, we can, because we can. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm really inspired uh, not only by this event, uh, I'm truly inspired by this event, but by, by the great work, and, and I've gotten to, to know a number of you around this room, and, and, and Sarah in my own district, you know, the Haven Hills, who's a, I'm pointing to the task force, and other folks who do such good work on this issue because it is so important. And it affects, as was said earlier, the entire city. I may represent the West San Fernando Valley, which a lot of people just think, don't even realize is part of this city is because it took me an hour and a half or more to get here. <laughs> I'm not saying you all here. I'm just saying some people. Uh, but, <laughs> but it affects all of us. In fact, it just I, about a year ago at this time, I got a call from a, a friend, and uh, uh, tragic, his sister who lives in my district was murdered uh, by domestic violence. And it just, it just underscores, no matter what the socioeconomic, ethnic, this is an issue that cuts across all bar all all race, creeds, colors, and everything else. And it's something that we need to unite around to make a difference. So I'm just here, I, I, wanna, I don't want to give a long speech because we're about to go uh, inside, but I just wanted to, to echo the concerns and the, the, uh, the words of my colleagues and just join with you today in, in, in moving forward. I can, we can, and committing ourselves, redoubling our efforts to doing more. Thank you. Thank you. I can, we can. It is my pleasure to bring up another good friend, I've known him for some time now, seen him in a lot of places, and he is definitely a man that is going to continue to lead this charge. And I know that he, we all understand the time frame. We've got our council members that need to get inside, so we're going to keep this moving right along. Please welcome Police Chief Charlie Beck. Yusefa, thank you very much, and thank you for being here. And Bob, the, uh, Captain Menzel's out there, and he'll remind you that, that we love the San Fernando Valley. <laughs> I can, we can, we must end domestic violence. And our contribution will be, as it always has been, the dedicated men and women of the Los Angeles Police Department who are being honored here today. I ask all of you to reach out to them. Every one of them, everyone, is a volunteer for this assignment. They pick this work not because I tell them to, but because it is in their hearts. They pick this work because they know, just like everybody behind me understands, that domestic violence is not only the cause of broken families, it's the cause of broken societies. This city suffers from far too much gang and gun violence, and I cannot tell you, as somebody that's been doing this for almost four decades, when the last time I talked to a young man who had taken another's life that did not see domestic violence in his home. It changes lives. It ruins lives. And it affects everybody in this room. There are many Angelinos that are very lucky. Their homes do not suffer from child abuse or spousal abuse. But when they step outside that threshold, they can become a victim too. Because this crime, unlike any other, creates people who are broken, who cannot function correctly, 
and who prey on others. That is why we must stop domestic violence. And the mayor is absolutely right, as he always is. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got reappointed. I didn't have to say that. <laughs> but, but, I, but, but he is absolutely correct. Domestic violence is significantly increased this year. We have seen an overall decline in crime for the last 11 years. Domestic violence, particularly spousal abuse, is up 18% so far this year. Now, to give you an idea what that means, because percents are not people, that is 1,300 more victims of spousal abuse this year than last. And I hate to tell Mike, it's not going to be 200 cases a year. It's going to be 200 cases a month. It's going to be 250. Now, no police chief, especially this one, likes to see numbers increase. But domestic violence is perhaps the most underreported crime. And Mike Bonham was right. That's because it's a secret. That's because it's something that stays within a family. While it breaks a family apart, it creates a conspiracy of silence. That's what today's about. We have to break that silence. We have to get our victims to come forward so we can start to help repair the families. Now, 13 of our 21 areas have DART response teams, and many of the officers that are partnered with, with caseworkers uh, and uh, CBOs are here today. But we need them in all 21. And I know the mayor is committed to that, and I certainly am committed to that. And that's how we'll make a difference in this. By all of us coming together, by bringing those victims forward, and by healing not only the victim, but the family. Because that's the sorrow of this, is the broken families. Thank you very much to everybody that's here. I appreciate your support. I can, we can. Next up, Rushmore Cervantes, GM. Okay, oh, you know, we're going to have uh, Council Member Labange come. You've been standing uh, and, and here so patiently. Okay. That's all right. And uh, Mitchell Farrell's right there, I think, is a bit. It. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's no excuse for domestic abuse. That was a bumper sticker for many years on every city car. And maybe we should ask that to be back on our cars. But I want to thank you. Elliot, move out of the way. And I want our Channel 35. An officer brings peace to a family, somewhere in this city. So I want to thank our officers, because they're the infrastructure, the human infrastructure that's helping. Thank you very much. Our council members are on a very strict schedule because they got to get in there and handle their business. So we are going to bring up next, from District 13, Council Member O'Farrell. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just going to be super quick because it's all been said, and I'm just happy to stand here in solidarity with everyone assembled here. I want to uh, take a moment and recognize the Los Angeles Police Department Domestic Violence Task Force, especially the officers that serve the 13th District. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is recognize Police Officer 2, Michael Morris from Hollywood. Michael, are you here? Right on. Detective 1, Robert Gonzalez from Northeast. Police Officer 2, Tan Trin from Olympic Division. Police Officer 2, Myra Correa from Northeast also. Police Officer 2, Felipe Neres. And Police Officer 3, Silvia Corral. Congratulations to you all. And let me just say, according to Lambda Legal, uh, domestic violence in the LGBT community is the same as it is against heterosexual women. 25% of all couples in same-sex relationships um, 
suffer from domestic violence. So we need to come out of the closet on that disturbing statistic as well. So we're all in this together. Violence serves no purpose anywhere with anyone at any time, and we must do all we can to bring it to an end. And I want to thank all of you uh, for uh, devoting your time, energy, and talent uh, toward that effort and goal. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And at this time, I, to all of the agencies that are here and to all the representatives that are here, um, I represent a media conglomerate that reaches 10.5 million people a week, Clear Channel, which is now iHeartMedia. I am pledging to you that the voice that we have is yours. You come to us, and I will make sure that those PSAs get run, that you're on those talk shows, that the information and services are out there. I can, we can. Our next speaker, Rushmore de Cervantes, GM. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, the Housing and Community Investment Department is very pleased to be a partner with the Domestic Violence Task Force. HCID, as it's called, are the administrators of the city's domestic violence shelters. We work closely with our partners, nonprofit organizations, to provide seven emergency shelters, as well as nine transitional shelters throughout the city for those that are victims of domestic violence and their families, where they're provided an array of services to ensure that they're immediately taken out of a harmful situation well, more importantly, as well as equally as important, is to ensure that they are given the necessary tools and the confidence to be able to live a life domestic violence free. Unfortunately, in 2013, we served over 1,600 people and their families. Now, normally departments like to tout their numbers. Uh, that is unacceptable. 1,600 people in just one year that we had to serve, where people felt the need to be able to give up everything and come to a shelter. That's how bad it got. Well, my friends, that's 1,600 people too many. Um, Mr. Galpern has indicated he's doing an audit of the program, and I think our ultimate goal should not be about making it better, which obviously we should, but our ultimate goal should not to have a program like that at all. We shouldn't need domestic shelters like that. So. As you can tell from the variety of speakers we've had here, it's a, it's a collaborative effort in how we address this. It's about getting the word out and people coming forward to address this issue that is not acceptable. And oh. my slogan is, oh. you like that? Way you too like cool. that? Way too cool. I can make a difference. But it's not I, we can make a difference. Thank you very much. Well, I want, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to thank all of our city officials for coming and sharing their um, perspective and wisdom, and everybody heard about the DART teams and all the divisions, right? Everybody got that. Okay, um, it's now my honor to actually present the Dr. Marjorie Browdy Award. Kathy, you want to come forward? Dr. Marjorie Browdy was the founder of the city's domestic violence task force and a model of personal courage who worked tirelessly to provide safety and resources for victims of domestic violence. This award is presented in her memory to a person or agency in recognition of their innovative collaboration in serving victims of violence. This year, it's my honor to present the Dr. Marjorie Browdy Award to a window between worlds. I should put this up. A Window Between Worlds is a wonderful and unique agency that uses art to empower and transform individuals and communities impacted by violence and trauma. A Window Between Worlds was started in 1991 by Kathy Salser, who traveled the country providing art workshops and training to residents and staff of 32 domestic violence shelters. Since then, A Window Between Worlds has served over 131,000 women, men, and children across the country in partnership with over 325 shelters, outreach centers, and transitional homes. A Window Between Worlds is also the creator of the I Can, We Can campaign to end abuse. 
This participatory art project uses hands as canvases, which you've seen some of the art competition amongst our officials, to share what each individual can do to end abuse. The posters that are here, the hands you've been able to create today, and the art that's on display at the east end of the bridge to City Hall East show how the I Can, We Can campaign creates a personal connection and helps us to see and acknowledge our shared responsibility to end violence. The I Can, We Can campaign teaches us that every single one of us can create, connect, and change the world through art. Sorry. Through incredible dedication, a strong will, and a vision of nonviolence, Kathy Saltzer, the executive director of A Window Between Worlds, and those working with her, have taught us all that creativity lives in each of us and that creativity can bring us peace. It is my honor to present the Dr. Marjorie Browdy Award to Kathy Salser, the Executive Director of A Window Between Worlds. It is an incredible honor to be standing here with you, to have just heard everything that was presented with I Can, We Can, and to be part of this circle of creating change. And to accept this on behalf of all who are part of Window Between Worlds, and that is so many in this room, it's 52 agencies throughout Los Angeles that are a Window Between Worlds using art as a tool of safety, transformation, and empowerment it is not the art itself, that piece, that object. The art is the transformation that happens when we have a window of safety to really listen to our hearts. And for survivors of domestic violence, this is not an easy thing, to have that safety, to honor our visions and our lives. And I want to share with you, when we think about I Can, We Can, I want to tell you, no I Can is too small to make a difference or too big to be possible. This entire organization grew from an I can that seemed impossible to me. I was 24 and I had an I can idea. I can travel across the country and share art in a way that might make a difference. That seemed impossible, that seemed crazy. And I loaded my trunk full of art supplies and I set out for what I thought would be one summer. I grew up with domestic violence. And in the face of that fear, art was my safety. Art was my voice without speaking. And what I saw that first summer and what's made A Window Between Worlds grow with all of you is the confirmation again and again that even a single art session can change someone's life forever. It can be that seed of safety that births a beginning of change it's like a placeholder for possibility. The objects that survivors create, they have hanging from their rearview mirrors. It becomes a compass. Eighty-six percent of our participants share that through this workshop, I was able to share something I've never shared with someone. One of our partners here in LA is a law enforcement unit where they have domestic violence services. And they began a Window Between Worlds art workshops. At first, the lead person there said, Why, what, what can cutting, gluing, and pasting do in the face of this issue? And he came to our office later to present us with a pen that they only present to officers serving in the line of duty. They presented it to us because what he saw was that that art session enabled the internal change to happen. One of the participants coming to their group had been in a domestic violence situation for two decades and was not ready to leave. And you know, most of you know here, that leaving is perhaps the most dangerous time for a survivor. But through that art workshop called Funeral of I Can't, that survivor felt ready to get a restraining order. And she said thank you to that leader that officer who led that art session. And the officer said, no, it's not me, it's you, it's the art. And she was ready to take that step. And that change, when he came to our office, he said, that's what we can't, we can't force that change. 
That change has to come from inside, and that is what the art makes possible. That safety for that internal shift to occur. And I am grateful to each of you for being part of I Can, We Can. That change does not happen in isolation. It happens with all of us creating that safety. Each officer, each art leader, each advocate, thank you to everyone working on the front lines with all of the survivors here in the city. I am so grateful to be someone who grew up here, who faced domestic violence here, and who had an ICANN that seemed impossible. But through it and through working with all of you, we are creating that safety for all of us to take steps. I hope that each of you will create an ICANN today. Now, even if it's as simple as, I wrote words on this two years ago of my ICANN. I can find clarity in the face of anger. I still feel confused from the violence I witnessed. I don't know what to do when I'm angry or when someone else is angry. But day by day, I'm finding that clarity. And this piece of art stays by my bed at night. And I encourage you to send away any thoughts of this is too silly or I'm just writing words. That is fine. Find a way today to think of what is your I can that will help end domestic violence and write it down and take it with you, and you are part of creating change. On behalf of everyone at Window Between Worlds, thank you. I can, we can, and the question that I leave you with is, I will, will you? Thank you so much for being here today.